Today, we're gonna to find out if any of these snake oil products actually help us reduce our oil consumption. Stay tuned. So welcome everybody to another episode of Build and Drive. Today we're gonna to be checking to see if any of these products work. Now, we've already run a few tests, but I'm gonna start talking to you about what exactly we're doing. All right, so everybody, back a little bit of backstory. This is my M52B25 BMW engine in my 325i E90, and it was burning oil at about one liter per 1,000 kilometers. Now, since then, it's been gradually getting worse and worse and worse, so we're going to throw some stuff at it to see if we can fix this oil burning problem. So after watching YouTube videos and scouring all the comments on the forums, I've written down all of the different products that people have suggested that can help reduce your oil consumption. So right here we have ATF, we have fuel injector cleaner, we have an engine flush, we have a liquid molly oil stop, we have sea foam, we have this anti-carbon stuff that you spray down the cylinders, and we have an Atomics engine flush. So you guys, it's better work because uh, I spent a ton of money on this stuff and uh, I'm not going to tell my wife. Flashback. So you guys, in the, if you remember in the last video, the first thing that we did was repaired all the oil leaks. So before starting anything, I recommend you do that. Second thing we did was replace the CCV valve. Sometimes those can go bad and it can suck oil into the intake, thus burning oil. That wasn't our problem. We replaced the CCV. It didn't help at all. So then the third thing that we did was do a compression test. All the cylinders seem to be good, even though it would kind of crank over, get to about 160, and then all of a sudden jump up to 175. I think that tells me that there's some oil getting by the piston rings and then sealing up the, the, the cylinders itself, thus increasing compression the more that it cranks over. So that could be an issue. So what we were looking at mainly is it could be valve stem seals and it could be piston rings. My comment just now, I think that it's piston rings. If you have bad valve stem seals, you'll get a puff of smoke when you first start the car early in the morning, and we're not getting that, so I don't think that it's valve stem seals here. Everything is pointing towards stuck or worn piston rings. Over time, piston rings can get carbon in them, the piston rings can get seized, which causes oil burning, and the more the oil burns, the more the piston and the piston rings get gunked up, and then it's a never-ending story. Those piston rings need to be replaced in order to solve the problem. But can we see if any of these products will actually help us to reduce the oil consumption or at least mask it for a little while? So the first thing that we did was form say. You should take out a spark plug, put a little bit of ATF down the cylinders, let it soak for 24 hours, spin the motor over, kick all that stuff out, and then drive the car. So what we did was we put a little bit of ATF, a little bit of fuel injector cleaner, mixed down in there. We left it for 24 hours. I put a breaker bar on the crank. We rotated the engine a little bit and then uh, let it sit for another 24 hours. We then drove the car got it nice and hot for about 20 kilometers, 20 to 30 kilometers. We drove the car when it first started up, man, it was smoking like crazy. Unfortunately, I didn't get any video of that, but it was smoking so bad. I just quickly took it somewhere, took it for a drive. I didn't want to get in trouble. It, it looked like the car was uh, on fire, literally. All right, so I didn't get video of uh, all the smoke, but um, as you can see, I've driven now about 20 kilometers. Um, got the car nice and warmed up and then did some high rev, slow high rev uh, driving on the highway. So like stayed at third gear, 5,000 RPM, 110 kilometers an hour. And seems to have cleared everything out. Um, as you can see, there's zero smoke now. But after driving on that, it did not work. We did not see any improvement in oil consumption at all whatsoever. So ATF down the spark plug holes, 
did not work. The next thing we looked at is this Liquid Molly motor flush. So what we do with this is you put it inside the crankcase, you pour it in like you would oil, and then you let the engine idle for about 15 minutes, and then you change the oil, and that should clean out any deposits. It should free up the piston rings. Um, on the pistons themselves, they have these oil drain holes, and sometimes those can get clogged up, and so the oil doesn't drain through the piston into the crankcase, it just gets pushed back up and burned in the cylinder head. So this goes through the whole engine and it cleans out everything. So we did this, we cleaned, we put that in, we ran the car for 15 minutes and then we dumped the oil out. We did a quick oil change on it and with some Castrol 0W40 and then we drove the car. And guess what? It did not help us improve our oil consumption numbers. So then I started getting worried, so I went and bought one of these things. This is a Liquid Molly oil stop. It's normally used for oil spills, like if you have an oil leak, but also it says it can help regenerate your valve stem seals. Um, so what people think this is when you look at the, the data sheets is this is some sort of like, it just thickens the oil a bit, you know, makes it like a 5W50 or something like that. Um, but it says that it regenerates valve stem seals, it regenerates seals, like any type of rubber seals, um, and things like that, and thickens the oil so that it stops your car from leaking oil. So we ran that, and of course, that did not work either. Okay, well, we've done 300 kilometers. It says it's down to one bar. The light hasn't shown up yet, but I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna put in another liter of oil. That did not work either. So then people are like, oh well, good old sea foam. So I went and bought some sea foam. This is, you can put this in the gas tank, you can put this in the crankcase. Um, it'll clean everything. It cleans injectors, stabilizes fuels. Um, quiets noisy lifters, it cleans deposits, it adds lubricity to fuel. I mean, this does it all. So then what we did was we pulled all the spark plugs out just to check to see their condition. All it is is an extension and a 16 millimeter. All the spark plugs, except for number three, looked really good. There was no real problems. Everything looked pretty normal. This one, as you can see, looks pretty normal. There's a bit of carbon on there, but that's normal after 10,000 kilometers. And so I knew, you know what, there's something going on with piston number three. So in comes the sea foam. What you do is I was going away on a winter break. And so I poured some sea foam down in the cylinders and I left the car for about two weeks. I came back, I pulled the fuse on the oil pump, ran the car a little bit just to get all the fluid out, put everything back together, drove the car, I mean, the sea foam was in there for like two weeks, so it should have done something to the rings, right? Well, I looked down in there with a boroscope, and you could see that it had cleaned maybe the top of the pistons, but I didn't know yet if it was actually going into the piston rings themselves. I was really excited to see if anything had happened, and so we drove the car, and again, about 800 kilometers later, it asked for another liter of oil. So did sea foam help us reduce our oil consumption? Unfortunately, no, it did not. So now, here was one of our last hopes. It's called Very Lube Anti-Carbon Professional. And what it says is it actually decarbonizes piston rings, a fast acting product designed to clean stuck piston rings of gasoline and diesel engines from carbon, restores mobility of stuck piston rings and levels compression in cylinders, clean cylinders, pistons, combustion chambers, and valves from all types of com com contaminants, etc, 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 safe for catalytic converters and oxygen sensors. So this was my saving grace. Was this going to work in our engine? What you do is you get the car nice and hot and then you spray some of this down into the cylinders and lo and behold it was bubbling and foaming uh, i could clearly see there was something going on so i was really excited i thought you know what this is the one that's gonna work so we drove it some more 
and drove it some more. And lo and behold, after about now 500 kilometers, it asked for another liter of oil. So let's recap. Every single product that we've used has either not done anything to improve the oil consumption or has actually made it worse. This is the last thing that was on the forums. This is Atomics, Atomics Total Flush Oil System Cleaner. It cleans the oil system with an anti-carbon effect, provides anti-wear protection of an engine for gasoline engines, contains a revitalizant for anti-wear protection of engine parts, safely removes all kinds of deposits and contaminate contaminations. Can't say that word today. So you should pour this in, drive for about 20 kilometers, and for a deep cleaning and removing of carbon from piston rings, drive for about 200 kilometers in regular mode. So we poured that in. We actually drove on it for about 200 to 250 kilometers and then we changed the oil. What do you guys think happened after that? So it definitely did something for our engine. It cleaned it so well that our engine oil consumption went from 500 kilometers for one liter all the way down to 300 kilometers for one liter of oil. So what I think happened is all of the products did what they were supposed to do. However, it cleaned out the piston rings to the point where the carbon that was in the piston rings is no longer holding the rings out against the cylinder wall. So it cleaned out the piston rings and then the piston rings are now much looser in the bore, thus letting even more oil pass, which is no bueno. So what we've concluded is that there's no simple way to fix oil consumption issues with any of these products. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. What can we do? What have you tried that has worked? Because here I've tried it all and none of it worked for me. Doesn't mean it can't work for you or maybe with a different engine, but none of them have worked for me, which is a big disappointment. So you guys, if you guys are interested in seeing the rebuild process on this engine, don't forget to subscribe and uh, check out my other videos linked down below. We're gonna have an entire rebuild series taking a look of what actually happened in this engine. We're gonna take apart the engine and actually see if any of these products cleaned it like they said they would. But also we're gonna inspect and see why this thing is actually burning so much oil. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys in the next video.